This is topic 40, the mean value theorem. So assuming that f is continuous in AB and that f is also differentiable within that interval, then the conclusion says that the instantaneous rate of change at some point within that interval, within this interval, is going to be equal to the average rate of change within that same interval. All right, now if you look at this graph, hopefully that'll make a little bit more sense. If you look at it, this is right here, this line between A and B, that straight line, represents the average rate of change between those two points, okay? And that theorem says that if this, is, if this curve is continuous and differentiable everywhere, then there's gonna be a point, at least one point between A and B where the slope of the secant line will be the same as the slope of the tangent line. And that's what the value theorem essentially, the mean value theorem, excuse me, is essentially telling you, all right? So how do we do this in a problem? So in example number one, they ask you to verify that f of x satisfies the hypotheses of the mean value theorem on the interval 0, 3, and then they want you to find all the numbers c that satisfy the conclusion, all right? So the first thing we must do to satisfy, uh, to figure out if this satisfies the hypothesis is to figure out if this is continuous. So as you look at this, y minus x squared, you should know that this is a parabola, all right? So it is gonna be continuous. It's going to be continuous in this interval. All right, so it's definitely going to be continu it's continuous everywhere, but it's definitely continuous within that interval. And now the second part is we're asking ourselves, is this going to, is this going to be differentiable? All right, so you definitely have to check. You have to check to make sure that those things are true, because if those things are not true, then you're basically finished. All right, so is going to be differentiable to zero and three. So yeah, if you remember what this looks like, right, which sort of looks like this. Remember, we're only looking at zero and three after all. So we're only looking between zero and three. Okay, so this is going to be differentiable and it's going to be continuous over zero and three. Okay, so those two things are true. So now they want us to find Okay, they want us to show that there is a point where the derivative is equal to the average rate of change and the interval between 0 and 3. Okay, so now I'm just writing the formula at this point. And then now I'm going to plug that into the formula. Okay, so f prime of x. You have to first take the derivative of this function right here. So if I take the derivative of this, the derivative of f of x is going to be negative 2x. Okay, and then now I have f of 3 minus f of 0 over 3 minus 0. Okay, so remember that f of 3 is going to come from the original function. I'm just going to plug in a 3 back into this, right? And if I plug in a 3 back into this, I would have 1 minus 9, which is negative 8. All right, so negative 2x is equal to negative 8. Now, f of 0 would be 1. Again, I'm just plugging in a 0 back into this function. Over 3, or 3 minus 0. So now... When I come over to this side, I have negative 2x. It's equal to, let's see, negative 9 over 3. Which is equal to negative 3. So x is equal to 3 halves. So what that says is that there's a point which is actually 1.5, right, at point 1.5, the slope of the secant line will be the same as the slope of the derivative at that point. Okay, so therefore, the mean value theorem is satisfied. By x is equal to 3 halves. An illustration I'm going to use a calculator fast 
is that this is, I'm just looking at the window between zero and three, and we're saying that there's a point, which is one half. And let me put that on there, so let me see if I can here. There's that point right here, the one you see flashing, where the slope of the derivative, right? The derivative would be the same thing as, um, would be the same as the slope between that point and that point down there. It would be the same slope, okay? So, hopefully that makes sense. Not only the formula is easy, but hopefully also just intuitively that makes sense to you, right? Because as always, the questions always get a little bit more difficult. All right, on the back, same thing, all right? Now they're asking us that given that function over the interval between negative one and one, find a C that satisfies the mean value theorem. That's the same thing, all right? They didn't actually write mean value theorem in this instance, but it's the same idea. Remember that point C is the point where the derivative, the derivative of that point which is the slope, would be equal to the slope of the secant line, okay? So even though they didn't actually write the mean value theorem, that's what that is, all right? So the first thing you must do is to check if it's continuous. All right, and if it's, is it continuous over negative one and one? If you look at this, this is just a cubic function. It is, okay? There's not a rational function here or any type of square root or even root for that matter, so that's definitely going to happen. It's definitely going to be continuous. And it's also going to be differentiable. If, uh, I misspelled differentiable. Oops. So the differentiable between negative one and one. If you look at it, it is. It's going to be definitely differentiable between those. So then now your only job is to figure out a C value that satisfies the mean value theorem. All right. So what you do here is you take the derivative. Remember, this even has the formula for you. You're going to take the derivative. So you have 3x squared minus 1. That's the derivative of f of x. You're going to set that equal to f of 1 minus f of negative 1 over 1 minus a negative 1, okay? And then after that, really all you're doing is solving for x, and x will be that c value that you're looking for, okay? So now, this is going to give us 3x squared minus 1. f of 1, again, if you go back to the beginning and you plug in a 1 into the this function right here, that would be 1 minus 1, which is 0. And if you plug in a negative 1 into here, you would have negative 1 plus 1, because a negative times a negative will make that a positive, that would also give you a 0. And on the bottom, you would have a 2. All right, so all I have now is 3x squared minus 1 is equal to 0, and then I'm going to try to solve for x. So add 1, and then divide by 3. And then you take the square root. So on this one, you actually have two points. All right, there's two points on this graph where the derivative, the derivative at point at this two points is the same as the slope of the secant line between the point between the points negative one and positive one. Okay, so that's it for this lesson. If you have any questions, let me know. I believe that the, the homework should be relatively simple, but make sure you really understand the idea behind it.